So today we're going to discuss about nosocomial infections, and uh, in this talk I'm going to cover catheter-associated bloodstream infections and uh, catheter-associated urinary tract infections with a little bit of mention about asymptomatic bacteriuria. Let's start first start talking about the catheter-associated bloodstream infections in, in the ICU. As you all know, hospital-acquired infections affects millions and millions of people worldwide. This is data from the West which says that almost 1.5 million people every year are, are affected by some kind of a hospital-acquired infection. It has become an enormous burden economically <coughs> and for insurance purposes to the point where in the U.S. insurance companies do not reimburse if you develop a hospital-acquired infection during your ICU stay. Hence, it becomes very important for us to prevent it and then subsequently try to address it and get the patients better as fast as possible. So how about the incidence of these infections in our country? I'm just going to show you some data. This is from the Rosenthal study in 2006 where they looked at almost 55 ICUs in 46 hospitals in developing countries including India. They looked at almost 21,000 patients and they found that the overall incidence rate as you can see is, is got 15% uh, chances of a catheter related bloodstream infection. And once you develop a catheter related bloodstream infection, the mortality rate seems to be somewhere around 35%, which is very, very high. So it becomes a very common problem and also seems to be extremely you know, important in terms of doing this. <laughs> How about only India? This is a study that we have collected data. It's not yet published, but uh, I'm just sharing you here that you, here you can see that uh, the ventilator-associated pneumonia rates are about 65% of all the ICU infections. Two-thirds are ventilator-associated pneumonia. Almost one quarter seem to be CRBSI, and a small proportion seem to be COTI. And if you look at the mortality, our mortality of catheter-related bloodstream infections is very similar to what the Rosenthal study showed. It's almost 35% mortality because almost all of these patients are bacteremic compared to the other infections. And if you just look at the six months follow-up which we did, two-thirds of the patients are alive at the end of six months. About 10% are dead and the other 30% we have lost to follow-up uh, in our study. But at least you know that there is a reasonable survival if you can get them out of the hospital over the next six-month period. What are the common organisms causing CRBSI in our country? Again, the data from Moses study sponsored by the Indian Society of Critical Care Medicine. If you look at the common bugs, common bug, the number one bug is probably Klebsiella in our, in our study, which is expected, followed by Pseudomonas and Acinetobacter, which is not a surprise. The point I want to make very clearly is you don't see gram positives here in my slide at all. It, it, it forms a very, very small proportion of of uh, the organisms that cause uh, catheter-related bloodstream infections. Right after the three gram negatives comes E. coli in Canada. Canada obviously is a, is a common bug that we need to be careful about.